Hey guys, um, I am out today. Um, as you can probably tell, I feel a little sick. Um, I'll probably only be out uh, Monday and Tuesday at max if I'm still really uh, feeling awful. Um, but what I'm going to go ahead and show you is my method of doing UVs, which I feel like you guys will enjoy way, way more than you did uh, that one lady's version. Um, it's much easier. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I went ahead and uh, spawn these in for you guys. You guys will just go to the classroom, click on the link, and download these, uh, this Maya file right here and open it on your desktop. Um, and then you can just follow along with this video. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the middle one, and I'm going to leave these two up to you. Um, just a hint, you're going to treat this one exactly like we do this. So the same way we're going to do this one, you're going to do the sphere, just a little different. Um, and you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. But I'll do this one for you guys, and then you'll do these two on your own, and then turn them in. So, and you'll just turn in a screenshot. What we're going to do here is I'm going to start the same way I start with all of mine. So you can see here that I do not have any UVs on anything here. I already went ahead and uh, delete them. I went ahead and deleted them for you guys. And they have no UVs or anything like that. So the way I start every time is I go to UV and I go to camera based. And I start with what is like a screenshot, like x-ray version of a screenshot. Uh, using my camera. So wherever my camera is placed is where this uh, shoots through like this. And it just makes it much easier because what I actually end up doing is I will take and select this top edge and then this bottom edge because what I want to do is separate these since they're facing different planes. Like this guy, if I was to go to UV camera based, the top and the bottom here will come out perfect because they're planar while the center is obviously cylindrical. So all I'm doing is starting kind of backwards where I go to UV camera base to get a starting point, some, something I can work with. And then I come here and I cut where there's points of major shape change. Like this is where the shape changes the most because it goes from being cylindrical to planar. So what I do is I grab by here and I grab the bottom one. Mainly you do this on harsh corners is where you're going to cut. So these harsh corners here, I'm going to grab those and in, not this one, where I hold shift right click, I'm going to hold shift right click in this UV editor here. So when I hold shift and right click, I'm going to go to cut right there. So after I release on cut, it will cut these planes, these shells off of the other shells. So if I go to UV shell, I can interact with each one of these separately. So I can grab this shell, the top shell and the bottom shell. And these two are the same. And all we have to actually do with these is, since they're already separated from this guy, um, this guy has to have some more work done to it. But if we go ahead and unfold these guys and basically just lay them flat, they're going to look good. So if I turn on my uh, my checker pattern here, you can see that everything is okay. There's a, there's a good amount of distortion because of the screenshot. And these are obviously stretched, right? If we take these two and shift right click and unfold, they're going to unfold fine. And now they're done. Like, these guys are done. We don't have to worry about them anymore. They're chilling. So we can just put them in the corner and deal with this guy right here. So this, we can do one of two things. We can grab this since it is cylindrical, and we can UV cylindrical uh, map it if you guys like that tool. I don't like that tool that much. What I like to do is just find wherever the camera is not going to be facing in the game or whatever is going on and choose a seam to have run down the back. So for me, I'm uh, I'm choosing this one right here because we're going to pretend that our camera in our scene is right here where I'm looking now. So to hide it from the camera, I'm going to put it back here. So I'm going to cut uh, while that edge was selected. And from here, I can go to right click, UV shell, select this and hold shift, right click again to unfold. See, now this came out well and uh, it doesn't look distorted. Sometimes when you unfold, it'll do this, where uh, it's still kind of chunky. And what you end up having to do is unfold in either U or V if it doesn't come out right. Um, but this time, just normal unfold worked for us, so we're chilling. Something we do need to be aware of, though, is if we do not make this cut right here that I made, 
so this can be unfolded properly uh it won't unfold properly it'll do this where it tries to unfold uh and it doesn't quite know how to unfold so it will kind of flatten it from the top down because it has no seam to flatten from so we have to choose a place to hide our seam and actually make a cut so this can be uh, cut down the back and unfolded, kind of like the way you would uh, um, <clears throat> like uh, any sort of tube shape. I'm trying to think of, uh, think of those croissants, you know what I mean? The, the, the ones that come in a tube um, that your mom probably makes at home or something. If she, I know that they unwrap kind of in a twisted form, but um, if she was to take a knife and cut them down the back and open them that way, it would work totally fine, and you could lay the cardboard flat if you needed to. That was a really bad example, but that's the <laughs> best thing I can kind of come up with on the spot. Um, but yeah, you need just need somewhere to cut in the back and unfold it from there. And with these guys, uh, we're pretty much done. Uh... Everything's looking really nice. We just need to pack it into the zero to one space. So this is something we talked about when you guys were doing the stool. Um, some of you may remember. We have to go to the transform tool and match everything to fit in this little box. But everything has to be the same size. We want to make sure that these squares aren't bigger than these squares like they are right now. So what we have to do is we have to get the textile density of this one in the transform tool. So in our transform options inside the UV toolkit, we come to transform. And we scroll down here until we see Texel Density. And we want to get the Texel Density of 1. And then we hold Shift so we can select one and deselect the other. So it deselects this one and selects these. And we can set uh, the same Textile Density from this one onto these other two. And from there, all we have to do is select everything. And we can actually pack this into this shell for us, this uh, this square that we ever need everything to go in, without having to actually touch it. We can just have Maya do it for us. And Maya tends to break things, so I know you guys are probably like, whoa, I don't really want Maya to do it. Well, it's not really that bad on these. We can go to Layout and Layout UV and go to the Options box for that. This whole time I'm holding Shift right click. So in UV Shell mode, with these selected, I'm holding Shift right click, and I'm going to Layout layout UV and this little options box right here we can click on that and you want to make sure that shell prescaling is off uh, I have no idea what that is and it doesn't work uh, it kind of just messes stuff up I'm probably using it wrong but I've turned it off and it's been working fine rotate shells I like to leave this on 90 so check on rotate shells and leave it on 90 0 and 360 just leave that how it is um, I like to add shell padding. So shell padding is so shells do not touch each other, like uh, these right here. These won't touch each other. It'll keep them apart. And tile padding is so these shells do not touch the tile. These black lines, or this you know square, is referred to as a tile. There's multiple tiles on this sheet. Um, we're packing everything into one tile because we're only using one JPEG per object. Um, so we're going to add shell padding of five pixels right here see pixels is checked on and tile padding of one pixels as well or five pixels and after we have those settings in we can select all our shells here so make sure we are in right click UV shell mode select everything and then hit apply and it will lay out our UVs for us now something that you see is like wow we are wasting a lot of this JPEG considering if it is just a single image a lot of it's getting wasted and you'd be correct so what we can do is actually make another cut. So this is, uh, if you're using something like Substance, you can get away with multiple cuts. Um, so, because Substance can actually kind of uh, blend out seams in your UVs, and you don't have to worry about seams so much. So what we can do is actually just select this edge right here, hold Shift, right click, and cut, and go to UV Shell and select everything again, and apply once again, and see how we saved so much space, like so much more space got used. Um, this up here is pretty much as optimal as we can get it, unless we were to cut our shape some more. But uh, this is what I'm looking for. You guys can just take a screenshot of them all. Uh, pr uh, when you have them all, all you have to do is take a screenshot like this, and I'll be able to see like uh, multiple stacked UVs. If you want, what I would prefer you do is after you're done with this one, 
go to UV shell mode and put it over here. And then when you have this one done, like obviously this is not how I want it to look when you're done. But if I had some UVs for this done, uh, I would want you to leave it like up here. And then the next one in the other corner, that way when we go to object mode, I can see each one of these UVs in each corner uh, when you take your screenshot. And just so you guys remember, that screenshot is you can either type down here in the bottom left, snipping tool, and SNI snipping tool right there. Or you can have these highlighted and press your Windows key, Shift S. You'll be presented with this menu, and then you click and drag. You do the same thing with the snipping tool. It'll copy it here. You click here. Uh, you go to the save icon and you save it into your folders. But that's all you guys have to worry about. Turn in that image by probably Tuesday. Uh, unless some of you are really quick, you can get it done by Monday. Um, that's it. Sorry I sound so sick. <laughs> I hope you guys have a really great day and have a great sub, okay?